what do you do if you want to take a mixture apart and separate it? Well, today you're going to learn about separating mixtures. We're looking at how to separate mixtures today. Uh, and there are four different ways that we're going to investigate. Uh, the first one is this. Uh, so if we wanted to separate two things by their size, we would use straining. So an uh, example would be like spaghetti and water. The first one is if you had something like uh, this. If you had water and marbles, or even say pasta, and uh, you needed to drain your pasta out of the water. Uh, what would you use to separate things that are large, like the marbles, from the water? You probably guessed it's a strainer like this. So uh, this strainer has uh, slits in it. Uh, most strainers have holes, but it works the same way. Any of the larger things are going to stay inside, and the smaller things are going to uh, go through. So we'll take a look at that here. So if I pour the water and the marbles, well, the marbles stay in and the water went out. So straining is, uh, is one method. The second way is to use a magnet. And uh, that would be if we're going to separate something that has iron in it. So magnets are used to separate only things that have iron. So for example, salt and iron. We had something like we did in our lab before, and I can probably figure this one out, but we've got some, um, some sugar here and some iron filings. How could I get those apart? Did you get it? That's right, we're going to use a magnet just like we did uh, in your other lab when we were talking about homogeneous and heterogeneous. So I can separate out the iron here. You can see that there's a bit of iron on there. and I think you saw that when we did it in class. So using a magnet is the, is the second method for uh, separating mixtures. The third way is uh, evaporation, and with evaporation, that's going to separate a liquid from a dissolved solid. So you'd leave the uh, mixture sitting, and the water would, um, over time, evaporate and go into the air and turn into uh, water as a gas. And you'd be left with the sugar uh, in the container, or the solute left in the container, in this case. And the fourth method is dissolving. Uh, and that separates substances by, that can be dissolved um, from a substance that can't be dissolved. So uh, you could use water or another liquid uh, to add to the mixture, and it would dissolve one of the parts, and then you'd have to um, take that water with the dissolved part off, and you'd be left with the, the uh, remaining part. So salt and iron. Well, the iron wouldn't dissolve in the water, but the salt would. So you could take the water and salt off and leave the iron in the container. And the last method uh, would be if we um, had something like the iron filings but, and, the, and the sugar or salt, and we didn't have uh, a magnet to separate them. What could you actually put in there to take the salt out? You guessed it. We could actually use some water and put it in there. And what would happen to the, um, the salt? or sugar, what would start to happen to it? It would eventually dissolve, and we need a lot more water than I have here, and it would take a lot of time, but it would eventually dissolve, and then you could drain the water off, or let it evaporate, and you'd be left with just the iron filings. So dissolving is the fourth method. Um, I hope you learned something there. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.